All right, so uh, let's talk about TechCrimes' uh, better product. And uh, uh, my name is Andres. Uh, I am uh, with your product at Carousel. Um, I'm at Carousel for six months already, so I came to, to the Southeast Asia and Singapore in particular uh, pretty recently. Um, it's an exciting region and it's a super exciting product. And I will use the, the product of Carousel as an example of uh, how, how the 10 times better product looks like, why it's 10 times better, and uh, how we think about also the possible next generation for the product like us uh, in the future. Uh, very shortly about me and my previous experience. Uh, for the last four years before I joined Carousel, I had product, uh, had a product at the Vinted, uh, which is a peer-to-peer -peer fashion marketplace, actually the biggest in the world, connecting women who have uh, too much uh, fashion in their closets that they don't actually use or wear, uh, and enabling them to buy and sell online too. So very similar. Uh, actually went through the uh, desktop to mobile transition, um, and it was a very interesting journey. Before that, I worked with Iskimi, uh, which is the mobile social network and ad network in Africa, uh, particularly big in Nigeria. Um, and uh, uh, earlier, um, I've spent quite a few years uh, uh, working with Nokia and seeing uh, other like 10 times better products appear in the market <laughs> suddenly. And now you probably like, I don't know how many of you still know Nokia uh, as a company. Um, so 10 times uh, ten time changes happened quite a few times uh, in my career, and I love them. Uh, they, they allow products to improve, they allow people to improve, and that's great. So, so let's try to, to look at that a bit. Um, first of all, uh, I find uh, quite a lot of people who, you know, who believe in that there can be transformations where you have like times better experience, ten times better experience, and people who think that uh, things evolve uh, and that ten times better products are actually myths. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how, how much here in the audience actually believe that there are ten times better products. Like can, can someone raise their hands who, who are believers? No one? <laughs> okay, we have at least five or few people. Um, but there, there, there are a lot of skeptics. Uh, there are a lot of skeptics thinking about that, you know, th even products like iPhone were not 10 times better products. But at the same time, there, there are a lot of believers. Like, uh, there's, uh, there's this guy called Ken Arden, who's like really, really strong person in product management. Uh, and he, he did a good presentation about uh, how to do 10 times better product management. And uh, if you are interested in the topic after uh, my presentation, I really encourage you to, to look at that presentation, which was in the Mind the Product conference, uh, I think two years ago. So, what are the examples of 10 of products? What do I consider, and you know, when we work in the company, consider as other 10 of better products in the past? Um, so there is iPhone. Uh, when iPhone arrived, uh, uh, any smartphone, any other smartphone in the market uh, suddenly uh, was not attractive anymore. Uh, and iPhone was so much better uh, that people flocked, they wanted that, uh, that thing. And especially as, as the iPhone evolution uh, went through in the next couple of years after the launch, it was the product we have. And that's, that I saw from the other side, uh, working with Nokia and seeing their reaction, they being slow to, to react. So Facebook, products like Snapchat or Grab, and uh, for example, Tesla Model S, I think, I think are good examples of, of, of these things. Next to that, uh, and I mean, it may sound pretentious, but uh, I believe that Carousel is a 10 times better product. And uh, let me explain you why, and, uh, but before that, uh, just a few facts about Carousel. So, so we are the company that operates in 90 cities, enabling people like everyone here in this room to buy and sell online. Basically, we are inspiring the world to start selling, and a lot of people who sell on Carousel are doing that for the first time. Uh, we have uh, tens of millions of listings, and a lot of them actually got sold already. Uh, so the platform actually works, it's widespread, and uh, in countries like Singapore and Hong Kong, it's a dominant uh, platform uh, for the people to uh, sell online when they have the stuff that they no longer need. Um, looking into the classifiers as a space, looking into the products uh, that were in the past, um, 
that enable people to sell online, uh, actually we went through a few generations already. Uh, it's not the first time uh, in the history that there are products that are 10 times better than anything else in that particular market at that point of time. Um, so these generations, you know, we consider the first generation to be newspapers. Um, so if you look 20 years ago, uh, that was the dominant uh, product if you, know, if you wanted to sell something. Then we went into the online stage, and now we are in the mobile stage. And class, uh, Carousel is uh, uh, as representative, representative of that mobile stage. Um, so for hundreds, hundreds of years, uh, if we wanted to sell something, we had to, uh, most of the time, place an ad on the newspaper. Um, and that was a tedious process. You, know, you had to get in touch with the newspaper office. You had to pay somehow. So you usually had to visit the newspaper office to do that. And you had to wait until your ad appears and so on. So it, it wasn't a great experience. And uh, 20 years ago, um, or actually 21 years ago, uh, a 10 times better product appeared. Uh, to, to sell online. And that product actually hasn't changed a lot since then. And the product is called Craigslist. Uh, Craigslist is often called as the ugliest product on the internet. Uh, <laughs> but uh, believe it or not, it was 10 times better product uh, 20 years ago. And it, it's, it's still so good that it allows it to be uh, super ugly and be successful. <laughs> It's, it's $800 million business a year. So looking into Craigslist and looking you know, why it was, why it's, why it's 10 times better than newspapers, uh, why it was such a generational change when Craigslist appeared, uh, there, there were quite a few things. So I mean, quite a few things that are very important for the people who want to sell the stuff that they don't need. Uh, so first thing that uh, changed with Craigslist was time that it actually takes to post something, uh, to actually get something in front of demand. Um, so suddenly, instead of you waiting to newspaper to print, or uh, you going to the newspaper's office and so on, uh, you could just fill in the form online, and it's here. Second thing that changed, uh, uh, and was very impactful, is the time uh, posted, which means like how long is my listing uh, visible to other people? Because it's not about just you know, today's newspaper that you throw away or uh, put in a different room in your house uh, the next day. Um, it, it stays for a lot longer time. And as there are more listings to be discovered, uh, there's a search function that is very powerful. So suddenly you have a product that works much better for a person to sell, and to sell online in this case. So what about the next generation uh, that came afterwards? And the, the generation that was actually started in 2012. And Carousel was one of the uh, first in the world to do that. Um, it also brought uh, or used free changes uh, uh, in the process that enabled the, uh, the market and uh, enabled the product to actually be 10 times better than whatever is there. 10 times better than Craigslist, for example. So the first thing that actually changed uh, with the arrival of mobile and uh, that the mobile classified platforms used heavily is the audience. So probably everyone in this room knows the impact of the smartphones that you know, there's just a lot more people using online through a smartphone than uh, the people who were using you know, desktop before and accessing the internet that way. So the, the broad audience improved a lot. But that's not the full story. The other part of the story is that uh, suddenly uh, what actually happened is that the, if you were looking into the time spent on the internet and the usage of the internet products, it was really male dominant. Uh, and now the things have actually shifted to uh, the use of the internet and the use of the internet products and the app uh, time spent online to being uh, woman dominant. So women are actually using uh, products more, and they're spending more time in doing that. So this actually, for products like Carousel, it opened a lot more new opportunities uh, to actually serve the customer that wasn't actually served with the classified products well before. Second thing that changed a lot was sensors that you have on the phone. 
So the most obvious sensor, and uh, you know, the, we leverage that sensor a lot on the Carousel app. Uh, we leverage that in communicating the what's so good about Carousel is this, uh, the camera. And our snapless cell promise that it's, it's super easy to list. So camera and, uh, uh, and GPS sensor, for example, they have location, shortened the, the time to list a lot. So suddenly, you know, if you want to sell something, uh, it's much easier. So let's say if you, if you are a woman who has a dress on a, uh, uh, at her closet and doesn't wear that dress anymore, uh, uh, first of all, there are products, uh, there starts to appear products that are uh, dedicated to you, are tailored to you, uh, that you also have time and access to use, uh, which was the, the audience point before. But there is also a much easier way to put that, put that thing for sale. Because if you are selling a dress, the picture is very important. It's much more important than, for example, selling a mobile phone or, or something else. And if you wanted to sell a dress before, and if you wanted to sell a dress on Craigslist, uh, you had to find your digital camera. You usually had to charge that camera. Uh, then you had to find the SD card or uh, something that you know you, you store uh, somewhere. Um, and you, you take the picture, you connect that camera to your computer, you transfer the files, then you, you, you complete a kind of complicated form, and then it's online. With the app and uh, uh, with, with all the apps that appeared with digital generation, it became like suddenly so much easier. Um, and uh, uh, it actually allowed people to launch totally new categories like uh, uh, women's fashion, which was not a viable category at all uh, before uh, the mobile generation of classifieds. Uh, the third thing uh, that uh, happened in uh, uh, with mobile was the principle that people are always on, always online. Um, and uh, the concept like chat became possible when buying and selling online. Um, and uh, uh, this facilitated the transaction process and improved transaction process and success rates inside the transactions a lot. And why? Because the time to response uh, from either side, buyer or seller, shorter from a matter of hours to a matter of minutes or sometimes even seconds in terms of both averages and you know, the actual facts that people face in, uh, in the market. So all in all, then, when you complete these things, uh, you, you get to the point where uh, the product that's in, in, that is in the market, like Carousel, uh, is actually 10 times better than whatever is there at that point of time. So in Singapore's case, it was probably Gumtree. Uh, there was actually some Craigslist presence too, uh, but, uh, um, but the product could just take off even if there were players in the market who had more money uh, to throw out marketing and things like that. But the product itself is just so much better that uh, people flock there and people use the, the product because of all the advantages that uh, I, I described to you. Uh, but the thing about 10 times uh, is that 10 times doesn't last. Uh, so you know, when uh, when iPhone was launched, uh, uh, it was a 10 times better product than whatever was there. Uh, but then Google did Android. And uh, uh, with Android, uh, you, know, you can always argue whoever is better, like iPhone, iOS, or Android as a platform, all the manufacturers that manufacture the phones. But it's, uh, but it's there, and uh, uh, you know, it's not that everyone is choosing iPhone anymore. The same with Snapchat, like Snapchat is doing IPO, uh, pretty soon, uh, but uh, they, their growth and uh, their perspective uh, and future, pro uh, future prospect is kind of difficult because, uh, you know, Facebook basically are solving the same user problems with basically the same features and doing that pretty good. So people are shifting from Snapchat and to, to use Instagram stories, for example, and maybe some of them will use WhatsApp statuses or, or, or other tools. So the, the key here is 10 times doesn't last. It doesn't last for Carousel, too. Uh, so there's, there's LetGo, there is uh, a product like OfferUp, there is Spock, and uh, there, there's, there's a lot more uh, in the market. And uh, it's just about you know, having 10 times better, 10% 10, 10 better product, or 20% you know, better product, and things like that. And in products or in markets where uh, the network effects are very strong, 
then whoever is the first in the market, whoever is doing, uh, you know, has, has these like six or 12 months uh, advantage of uh, going in there, uh, in the end is, is winning, even if it has like 10% or 20% worse product. Um, so we have a great product, uh, Carousel, to, to be successful in Southeast Asia, and we are growing and we are improving that product. Uh, but if we think about entering US, for example, it's very complicated. Because Carousel so far has raised uh, more than $40 million. Um, while uh, the companies that are here, let go and offer up, uh, together uh, have more than $500 million raised, just within the US market. Just to upset the Craigslist, who, who are doing, as I said, like, who's, who, who are $800 million a year business. So, uh, so how do you uh, how do you solve that? How do you inspire the next the next billion in the world to start selling uh, when you can't enter markets with even when you develop uh, you know better and better product uh, with what you have? So the 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 key here is that you know uh, is doing it again, thinking about okay what is the uh, the next uh, generational shift that you can introduce to the market um, and uh, trying to leverage that. And when we think about this and when we think about, okay, how do we create the next 10 times better product in classifies market, we, uh, we think, uh, uh, think about it based on a few uh, ideas, principles uh, that, that I will share uh, in, a, in, a, in a few of the next slides. So one, uh, one thing that was actually shared by Zook uh, earlier, I think this week, uh, in, the, in the Facebook manifesto is that, uh, you know, we, we always uh, overestimate what we can do in two years, and we always underestimate what's possible in 10 years. Uh, what, what it boils down to, it's, it boils down to that I think we always overestimate what we can do with the simple iteration of things. So we, we get so obsessed about our processes, our, uh, our things about improving what you uh, currently have, uh, the, the screen that you have, or you know, the conversion from one step to another, uh, that we then miss the, the boat for the, the huge change, the, the huge opportunities to, to get to 10x. Um, and that, that was is stated very well by Peter Thiel, uh, who, who is saying that you know, everything is all right with iteration, but iteration without, uh, without the ball plan won't take you from, from zero to one. And if you want to create a 10 times better product, even if you are, you know, even if you are a successful company as Carousel growing in the region and uh, 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 not having you know, any problems whatsoever with that at that point of time, you're still a zero if you consider yourself in the 10 years perspective. So you have to get there, you have to be 10 times better. And uh, uh, how, how do they, how usually 10 times better products looks like? Uh, they, they are often uh, very similar to, to what people use at that point. Uh, so it, yeah, it may be a different kind of platform, it may be um, uh, a different design, different offering, but 90% is usually the same. And only 10% is new. And quite often they, they combine things that are much better uh, and things that are slightly worse. So if you, if you look at, at the iPhone as an example, you know, uh, when iPhone launched, uh, uh, it was like kind of 90% the same as any other smartphone at that point, like Windows Pocket PCs and uh, the first products by Nokia were very, very, very similar. Uh, but, uh, but the iPhone and Apple uh, leveraged the, the remaining 10% to, to create enormous advantage. Uh, at the same time, uh, some of the things are much better, like you know, the use of capacitive screens and the interface and everything, but some of the things were really worse, like you know, no, no 3G. Uh, it's just, just one of the examples that, uh, with what kind of product uh, Apple started. So taking that into account, we understand that you know, when we try to do something, we try not to innovate everything in the process. So uh, for example, we had a, uh, some of the chat earlier uh, uh, about uh, you know, what, uh, what do you do about user problems and you know, what if the user needs change. 
but that's, that's the key, you know, how can you focus on the user needs that you, you don't think will change in the next 10 years? And when you focus on that, that's an opportunity often to leverage some of the things and create end of better product. So in our case, it all comes down to thinking about what user problems are, can we actually think about laws of physics? What are the user problems that like gravity, you know, will not probably change pretty soon? And, and what are the trends? What are the generational changes that are going around us that we can leverage and uh, actually uh, match uh, with these user problems? Um, and we believe when we match them, uh, uh, that's when the magic happens. And that's what history, at least in the market we operate and the market we understand, uh, shows us uh, in that. So one, one uh, you know, kind of a bit of off topic, uh, uh, understanding this for me is, is Formula One. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Formula One or watch, watch it. Anyone? Okay, we have some people in the room. So I'm a big fan of F1. Like uh, F1 is actually uh, why I'm here in Singapore. Like uh, <laughs> I, ca I came here September 2015, uh, and everywhere I go, I meet with you know interesting founders, interesting people working in the product field, and uh, I schedule a meeting with Suri that had to last for uh, half an hour. Um, and in the end, we ended up discussing marketplaces, products for two and a half hours. Um, and then the, the rest is history, and I'm now working at Carousel. But what Formula One showed me, and you know, I, I watched Formula One from 1992, is that uh, there is always a talk that you know, we need to change the rules. Like, uh, because when we change the rules, uh, everyone uh, has a chance, and you know, the field will be equal. Like, uh, you know, suddenly you'll have racing going on. It won't be anymore, you know, Mercedes team winning all the races. But, uh, the, uh, but the paradox of that is that, uh, you know, rules get rewritten every few years to equalize. Uh, but what eventually happens is that the result always, uh, the result of that always is the biggest uh, uh, differences between teams and you know, if you look at the last few years before that. And uh, actually when things don't change and when the rules are not changed uh, for, for a few years, uh, that's when the differences between teams uh, in the relative terms is the smallest. So teams are actually get equal as the years pass uh, after the big introduction to the rule changes and everything. So, uh, so the key question here is, you know, and the key thesis is that what are the what are the usually the big themes and the big changes that we are facing that will create these opportunities uh, to uh, to create something that is ten times better than anything in the market um, and ten times better than whatever the user is facing at you know any point of time. So it's also very important to pick real problems. So what what are the real problem examples uh, when we think about them in Carousel? So one example is that you know I'm not really inspired to sell. Like I don't want I, I don't want to sell. Maybe I even have nothing to sell. Uh, the other one, which is super big, is that I don't know what to sell. Like you know, a lot of people think that Carousel is a cool product because you know uh, nearly everyone in Singapore uses that. So if you don't use that, you think okay something is wrong with me. But I don't know what to sell. Um, and when we interview, when we talk with users, that's one, that's one of the things that, that we face. And we believe that we will face this after 10 years too, in any other market. Uh, another thing is that people are really bad at pricing stuff. Uh, there is uh, uh, a theme that is going through thousands of years that, you know, if you're doing something for the first time, you're not so good at that. And the, 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 the worst thing about trade most of the time, the trade between people is that when people, some people are just starting, they just don't know how to price. And they end up being at the wrong side of the equation. And the wrong pricing leads to less success. So for example, we at Carousel, we see that uh, uh, the new people that sell in Carousel, uh, they tend to price their stuff, depending on the category, 18% or 25% higher than uh, others in the market. And that leads them to be uh, nearly two times less successful than others in the market. Uh, so that's a huge problem. And if you solve that problem, that's a, you know, a straight away a 2x opportunity. 
The other example is that you know, I want to spend just zero time selling. You know, the moment I list, that's the moment I get, I get the money for that item. That's the, the crucial need that's coming from the user. And uh, another one is you know, people just don't trust other people. And you know, how do you get around that? And uh, you know, in a lot of companies that I worked uh, for, a lot of the companies I, I talked with, uh, these kind of questions, they are kind of, uh, they're very often just you know, pushed aside uh, because they, they, they look as not solvable questions. You know, how, how do you solve that kind of existential question that people don't trust other people? Uh, it, it seems very hard. It's very hard to fit in into you know, two-week sprint cycles, quarterly planning, and everything. But, uh, but that's a very important theme to, to look at these problems, not to forget them, and to look at them if you want to create actually 10 times better product. Because the 10 times better products actually happen through these things most of the time. Um, so as I said, one thing is the user problem. Another thing is, is themes and trends and observing and understanding them. So what are the themes that, themes that we are looking at in Carousel? Um, and I think a lot of people in this room are probably looking at the, a lot of the same stuff that's going around. Uh, so first theme is that you know, we in the world, uh, we are going through from you know, mobile first to AI first of all. And, uh, and there are you know, several different ways to think about that. Like you know, one, one way to think about that, oh, AI, let's launch an AI team, let's do some cool stuff on the AI, and uh, uh, you know, some magic will happen. But uh, the way we think at Carousel, uh, we think about them matching them with every user problem that we want to face. So if the problem is, you know, uh, I don't know how to price stuff, the, you know, we have to match it. We have to create a uh, much better experience using AI uh, by that. And we have to have engineers in every team that understand that and are able to leverage that. So how can we enable that is a big theme uh, for us if you want to create a next generation product. Another big theme that is going around is that uh, you know, C2C is becoming a real alternative to B2C in commerce or e-commerce. So one thing that you know, is very clear here in Southeast Asia is that uh, you know, if you want to travel from point A to B, uh, traveling with just a, a random guy who signed up on Grab or Uber uh, is a viable way to do that. Uh, and effective way to do that, more effective than getting a taxi. Uh, but was this a thought, you know, 10 years ago or 15 years ago? It was not a thought because, you know, people are afraid of other people and, uh, and so on. So, so we face these problems, but these problems, this, uh, these times look actually solvable. Another example is Airbnb, uh, where, you know, actually staying at someone else's house is, is this viable thing. As, uh, as it is in uh, you know, booking a hotel. It's a real alternative and people are choosing. We believe the same will happen with uh, buying and selling online. When you are selling as a person, right now you don't look uh, like a you know, formidable competitor to a commerce player like you know, Lazada or uh, Amazon or, or whatever, but we believe that you know, our job and one of the next generation shifts that will happen is how can we enable you to be at the same uh, place without putting a lot of additional effort. And ideally without putting any effort at all. And here are where things like FinTech evolution with uh, wallets, new payment methods, and you know, Bitcoin coming in eventually or some other cryptocurrency will come in to enable these transactions uh, uh, to become much easier. How can you as a person accept credit card payments uh, without all the hassle? How can you ensure the delivery easily how can you, you know, exit uh, your uh, skyscraper in CBD and just put in the package inside the, uh, you know, maybe pedestrian drone for coming from Starship Technologies, um, and so on. And you know, the last big theme that is actually developed here uh, in Google's office too, and Apple is also working on the same thing, is you know what we call virtual reality and augmented reality, and. Uh, uh, AR, uh, in, in our view, is 10 times better thing than VR. 10 times better, a uh, bigger opportunity. And why? Because you know, it combines what's virtual and what's real. And, uh, and especially in our field, we believe it can be a, a big game changer. And you know, 
after one or two years, the iPhone that you have or the Google phone that you have can sense the environment and can overlay the, the virtual stuff on that environment. And that will, be, that will be a great thing. So how do we leverage that? How do we think about that? So one example is the, uh, the carry lens uh, thing that we built as a product uh, in Carousel. And uh, we, we are thinking hard, okay, how can we solve problems like, you know, I just don't know what to sell. Like a lot of people download our apps and then uh, we, we actually don't know what to sell, what's sellable, what's, uh, what's doable and so on. And, uh, and the team came with, uh, with the concept of matching the, the problem of what to sell with uh, AI and uh, uh, AR. In a, in a sense that, you know, the first experience that you have when you launch a carousel app um, uh, the 10 times better version of Carousel, so to say, is that you, you launch it and uh, the app is actually scanning your environment and it opens in the camera mode. And uh, it actually detects the objects that are in the room. Um, and, uh, uh, in, uh, and it also suggests you how much can you get for that object. So in this case, it's just a dog stuff toy and, uh, and so on. So this is all just a prototype and just a concept. Uh, but we believe things like that will be what uh, uh, the next generation of classifiers will look like. So how can you make selling super easy, but using the latest technology and latest things that are there? And technology is still one or two years away from that. So for, in order for us to work successfully, we need guys here working on Google Tango to be also successful. Because all of these things will match together in that. Um, but that's where the opportunity lies. So to, uh, to sum this up, you know, the, the philosophy that, that's here is how can we think about user problems that are as laws of, of physics that don't change and will not change for the next 10 years? How will we, we can not miss the trends that are basically rules being rewritten uh, to, to read that and matching them and actually creating the 10 times better product. Thank you. That's it. You can get in touch with me on Twitter and LinkedIn. And uh, just a reminder that there's still some tickets remaining to get on the rocket ship called Carousel. You can find the link and tickets there. So we've got about five minutes for questions. Um, any question? Hi, thanks for your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I guess lunch was better than the presentation, right? Cloud <laughs> <laughs> question. You were saying you have so many millions of listings. So when somebody searches for a product, how do you decide what to give priority? Like, do you give more priority to your existing sellers, your loyal sellers, or the new sellers to save your attention? Or just how, what are your... Yes, so uh, in, in our case, the answer right now is that uh, there, there is no... Uh, not a lot of more sophisticated logic than just recency uh, of the listings. And, uh, uh, and that's an interesting paradox how recency actually works in products like ours. And I think that's also one of the opportunities how can we create that in terms of our product with uh, the ranking different things. Um, and uh, because recency uh, uh, plays a magical role in distribution of uh, attention in the marketplace. So how can you ensure that every person actually gets more or less equal attention um, in there? But uh, at the same time, some people like, you know, like new sellers are not getting enough of attention uh, because they are, you know, they are dis disadvantaged from the start because maybe they price a bit wrongly, maybe they don't have the trust capital and so on. So we also experiment in a way giving them more attention and so on. So there are different factors coming in place, and I think that's one of the things for Carousel to improve in how do we rank things. But currently, it's mostly very simple stuff. It's just a small question. So uh, you listed some of the yeah. yeah. So you, you list here a lot of problems regarding how to sell. So for example, I don't want to sell. I don't want the price how to sell, but this is all the, the problems of salesperson. And what about the problems of the person who want to buy something particular? Yeah. So how do you address it? 
that uh, you know the, the, the problems that I list uh, addresses the attitude and the key customer that we sell serve in, in our case. So uh, we we think that uh, in our case the biggest value that we create in the end is for individual seller. So for the person like you know everyone in, his, in this room when they want to sell something. Uh, so that's, that's even just uh, even narrower group than uh, you know any possible seller. Uh, but for sure, for these people to be successful, we also need to solve the buyer problems too. Um, I, I just didn't list these problems here, and uh, we uh, because we don't prioritize them as high as, as these ones. Uh, another question is uh, how to make a right choice between a ten percent growth and a ten times growth. So evolution can only give you a ten percent better product, yeah. and to take ten times better product, you have to revolutionize. Right? But uh, how to make a right choice? How to make it science, not a gamble? Because uh, it's easy to fall to uh, like survivor trap. You succeeded the uh, previous times when you did the ten times better product. How did you make a nice judgment in a big company and uh, like more resources and stake when you develop the next revolutionary uh, product that are ten times better? How can you make this choice? I think it's, uh, it's it's the question that has an answer. Probably depends. I don't see a scientific way of doing that. Uh, it really depends on uh, the company's priorities and the uh, state of the company and how much of the luxury does the company have to think about uh, uh, you know, 10 year horizon, how big w does it want to get? Because for example, Carousel as a company, as, as a product, we still have uh, a much better product in, in a lot of the markets that we operate. Um, however, even at this point, we understand that we don't have a better product in the US and you know, nobody else has. Uh, so you you make a strategic judgment of how important it is for you to be there and what value can it create. And out of that, okay, you allocate the chance of being there uh, by going into the very very high risk uh, things like uh, like that. So because we value this and we believe that's important uh, for us in the future uh, to leverage our ambition to inspire you know the next billions to start selling online. Uh, uh, we, we invest in that uh, particular, uh, particular amount of our time. So you answer the understand that it's, it's, it is a gamble, mm -hmm. you're just making a, this gambling like concept, so you understand that it's a gamble, you just like go for it. Yeah, for you, you allocate some, some of your time, uh, the, the amount of your time you think is, is viable uh, to pursue that gamble of uh, uh, being, uh, being able to serve bigger audience. So you guys, this I'm sorry, and we have to end this session here. And uh, yeah, probably we'll thank you for the use of all the time. Yeah. And you, you, you can also catch me later if you still have questions. I'm happy to, to answer them.